Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitising Using My Sonet Embroidery Software. This is part two of Using Pattern Fills, where I'm going to show you more great ways to change the way that you're using fill patterns within your digitising. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of My Sonet, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you're not going to miss out on any of our future episodes. In this video, I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed, but everything I show you, you'll be able to do on a Mac. The principles are exactly the same. You might find it useful to watch part one of the series just so that you understand how we've got to this stage. I'm in the digitising module and I've got a series of uh, pattern fill boxes that I'm adapting and changing. So just like before, I've clicked on the object I want to change and I've opened up the fill area and line box. Now in the earlier film we didn't talk about what's going on up here at all. You can see that I've chosen no borderline. If I wanted to, I could actually choose for instance to put a satin line and then if I click apply you can see that that's been added but today I'm just looking at pattern fill so I'm going to go back to no borderline and I'm going to click apply so that's taken that borderline out but if I click on the pull down arrow here you can actually see we've got lots of other options here so far we've just been on the pattern fill so let's explore some of these other options so if I click on Motif Fill, you might remember the default fill is always this star. So if I click Apply, the fill pattern becomes a series of stars. And I can play around with the size, um, the height of those. But also there's the feature here that I could actually choose a decorative stitch from either the Husvana Viking or Faf sewing machine. So in this case, I'm choosing Husvana Viking. I'm going to click and choose quilt stitches and then click on the pull down arrow and for instance I could choose something like this pattern and click apply. And that's a great way of actually um, uh, matching up perhaps some stitchery that you're actually doing with your sewing machine um, elsewhere on your project with your embroidery. So I'm going to click OK going to choose my next box and open up the fill area and line box again. The second option is shape fill and the default is this uh, sort of trapezoid but there's a whole range of shapes that you could actually use in here. I'm going to go with uh, this heart. The density again remember the higher the number the further spaced out it, it is and I'm going to click apply. And you can see I've got this fill pattern that's going around this idea of the heart. So if I click OK. Now we haven't got the little uh, handle on here, but the O is the centre of the object. So what I'm doing is a left click and drag. So it might be that I want to do something kind of crazy like this to actually build up the pattern in a really specific way. Again. Next box, and again, just moving that area and line out a uh, box so we can see what we're doing. The next option is a radial fill. Now, the density is 20. Again, the higher that number is, the more space there will be. In this case, I'm going to click apply so you can see what's going on. But in this case, in actual fact, I'm going to bring that density down to say 12 then click apply and you can see we've got this great shape I'm going to click OK and just like before if I want to I can move where that object is filling in uh, where the centre of uh, um, that radial fill is and again you can see it's a really smashing effect just like before next box And the next option is a spiral fill. I'm just again going to move it so you can see what I'm doing. And again, the higher the number, the further spaced out it is. 
and I'm going to go apply. And if I want more space, I can do. So you can see we've got this great um, uh, potential here. And there's an option here of a gradient. It's going to be kind of hard for me to show you um, how this would work, but the principles are kind of the same The um, from the earlier film. I'm actually going to bring this right down and click apply and there you go and you can see how this works the, the basically it's gradating out and it gives you this fantastic effect just like before happy with that I'm going to click OK next box is um, the next option is a quilt stippable and so I'm going to click apply and again this really suits bigger areas than the boxes that I've got here but we've got a curved option or we've got a straight option I'm going to click apply um, and we can change how close or far apart that gap is again I'm going to click um, in actual fact I'm going to go back to a curved and click apply and if you want to, you've got the choice of either a running or a triple stitch. And indeed, if you want to, you can lengthen or shorten your stitch. I'm happy with that, though. I'm not going to um, mess around with that, so I'm going to click OK. And that's a great way if you're looking for uh, an effect that maybe looks like uh, quilting. And the next option is contour fill. And um, in many ways, this isn't the best example for this because it will take the contour of the shape that you've chosen. And in this case, it's a square. And it, so it's not terribly exciting. But again, just like before, we can increase or decrease that gap, clicking applying to check that. Um, and again, we've got the option. We've got different choices of types of stitch and stitch length. So I'm going to click OK going to choose another box open up the fill area and let me show you about the crosshatch fill now the crosshatch fill you can see we've got lots and lots of options in here every we've got uh, different stitch types we've got different spacings um, I'm going to start off by clicking apply on the defaults and you can see that we've got this kind of crisp uh, this crosshatch that's what it says um, but what we can actually do if we want to, we can increase or decrease the angles. Um, if we definitely want it square as a grid, we can click that. If we want parallel lines, again, we can do that. Or if we want, we know sort of very specific angles that we, that we might want to choose, we can actually put in two angle values down there and that allows you an awful lot of control and so again I'm going to click OK I'm going to select the box open up the fill pattern um, open up the fill area and line and there's the option of a curved crosshatch fill and let me show you how this works so again I'm just going to start off by clicking on the defaults uh, you can see that we can change the spacing. So in this case, I'm going to make that spacing a little bit narrower. Click apply. Um, there are different. There are the different styles, just like before. But also, you can actually put in uh, your values in terms of curving. Um, uh, your curve in in and out. I'm going to um, click apply on that. But there's also uh, your choice of different stitches but the thing I like about this is in actual fact I'm going to click OK now I don't know if you can see we've got a series of uh, little triangles in here we've got a dark pink one and we've got a pale pink one this is affecting essentially the lines going this way the dark pink so you can actually really squeeze your shapes in and the paler pink are affecting the lines going the other way so 
if you want to you could actually really um, almost kind of get like an orb effect rather than um, this sort of archway effect so again there's great fun playing around with that I'm going to click on this last uh, box down here and this second to last option is the multi-wave fill and how this works is um, I'm going to click apply and what I then need to do so again I would specify my density I'm going to stick with the default but I'm going to go OK but if I go back to freehand create or indeed point create the options here for the multi wave line in this case I'm going to go with the freehand create pick that up and what I'm actually going to do is if I draw my little line in here that's actually the motif that is then picked up for the fill pattern that I'm creating and you can get some really spectacular effects with that I've got one last fill pattern I want to share with you I'm just going to uncheck this and I'm going to choose this box here I'm going to open up the fill area and line I am going to go with echo fill so let's start off with the default so I'm going to click apply now the default is an internal fill so what's happening is it's taking the shape of the object in this case it's a square and it's putting an echo fill in there now if you want it actually to be an um, internal fill that will keep going until it is completely filled you can set your gap just so that you know internal lines would be that it would fill it five, uh, the defaults five times but in this case let's actually go down to two I'm going to click apply the external is actually going to put them around that object and again let me show you so it's going to put two lines around the outside and can you see the default is always this style number one where you have a curved corner but if you wanted to you could have an angle corner or you could have this um, sort of beveled corner and of course if you want to you could actually go with external and internal lines so I'm going to click OK so hopefully you can see what a great range of different ways of putting a fill pattern into your digitized embroidery they're just there waiting for you to do something with them if you found this a useful film please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can help you get started with digitizing using MySonet embroidery software happy sewing